this video we'll be discussing uh, some of the ecgs uh, in uh, some syndromes so we'll start with the brugada syndrome we know something about the brugada syndrome brugada syndrome is uh, a sodium channelopathy it's a sodium channelopathy can cause sudden cardiac death sudden cardiac death because of the uh, ventricular arrhythmias ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation uh, that these patients are predisposed to remember that brugada syndrome uh, these patients uh, the ventricular arrhythmias can be precipitated by some stressors okay. it can be precipitated by some stressors uh, like uh, fever ischemia some sodium channel blockers there are so many others but this Uh, are the important ones sodium channel blockers if the patient with brugada syndrome is given sodium channel blocker any of the sodium channel blocker drug uh they uh, the ventricular arrhythmias may be precipitated uh, we have already seen uh, previously that this brugada syndrome is characterized by this coved st segment elevation in uh, v1 v2 and v3 mostly the uh, right sided precordial lead so from v1 to v3 mostly will get a coved st segment elevation if you see the criteria diagnostic criteria actually brugada syndrome are uh, three types type 1 type 2 type 3 type 1 is the classical one uh, that we always discuss so type 1 is uh, uh, the ecg finding is coved coved st segment elevation of more than 2 mm in more than one of v1 to v3 leads okay so this point is very important coved st segment elevation of more than 2 mm in more than one lead of v1 to v3 leads okay so like this like this this is actually a pathognomonic finding pathognomonic finding of brugada syndrome and this is also known as the brugada sign Also known as the Brugada finding, but along with the ECG finding, this ECG abnormality must be associated with one of the following clinical criteria to make the criteria uh, make the diagnosis of Brugada syndrome. So, what are the clinical criteria? There may be uh, there are around five to six criteria: documented ventricular arrhythmias like VT or VF. any documented vt or vf any family history of sudden cardiac death in young that is sudden cardiac death in less than 45 years then uh, coved st segment elevation in family members in family members coved st segment elevation in family members or inducible inducible ventricular tachycardia with electrical stimulation electrical stimulation then history of history of any syncope or nocturnal stimulation if of clinical criteria at least one clinical criteria has to be there to diagnose it as uh, brugada syndrome along with the ecg findings So documented VT or VF family history of sudden cardiac death in young that is less than forty five years. Coved ST segment elevation in family members inducible VT with electrical stimulation. History of syncope for nocturnal abnormal respiration. Now if you can't remember this, it's not very important. Just remember that along with the ECG finding, you need some clinical criteria, and the ECG finding is this that is coved ST segment elevation of more than two mm in more than one lead of from of V one to V three. Okay, so this is about the type one. Type two is The ST segment elevation has to be saddle back type. That means there will be some concavity upwards. So saddle back type ST segment elevation is seen in type two. Here also the ST segment elevation has to be more than two mm. Okay, this is type two. And type three, what happens in type three? Actually, it can be the morphology in type three can be of type one or type two, but here the elevation is less than two mm. That is the only difference. Okay. So if you see this is okay here, you can see. ST coved ST segment elevation more than two mm. Type two saddle back type ST segment elevation here also it is more than two mm. 
type 3, it can be coughed, it can be settled back, but here the elevation is less than 2 mm. Rest everything is same. Okay. You see this ECG, you can see this is saddle back type stereo saddle back type elevation type 2. This is also saddle back type elevation, but here it is less than 2 mm, so type 3. Next one is Bundgaard syndrome, not very important. For the sake of completion, you can remember this is familial ST segment depression syndrome. Familial ST segment depression syndrome. If you see the ECG, ECG is characterized by concave upward ST segment depression in lead 1 AVL V2 to V6, 1 to AVL, AVL V2 to V6. So multiple leads. 1, 2, AVL, AVF, then V2 to V6. Everywhere you can see there is a ST segment depression with concavity upwards. ST segment depression with concavity upwards. Another important finding is this notching. This notching you will get in P3, P4 in the ascending part of the ST segment. The depressed ST segment, the ascending part, you will get a notch. That is a finding in this Bungard syndrome. This is familial ST segment depression syndrome. Now, there are two congenital long QT syndromes that I have uh, forgotten to discuss in the long QT uh, section. Okay. These are another two long QT syndromes. One is Zarville. Lange Nielsen syndrome, another one is Romano Ward syndrome. Now, here you will get bilateral sensory neural hearing loss. Here, Romano Ward syndrome, there is no hearing loss. Okay, this is a potassium channel. Okay, what else? Uh, treatment for congenital long QT syndrome with beta blockers, and if it is not effective, you can go for. Implantable cardiovascular defibrillator. Anyway, we will be discussing more on this later. Leniger Leib's disease. Uh, here, uh, there will be idiopathic, idiopathic progressive fibrosis, idiopathic progressive fibrosis of the conduction system. system. Idiopathic progressive fibrosis of the conduction system. So, these patients may have EV blocks or bundle branch blocks or combination of AV and bundle branch blocks. Brain syndrome, I have already told, this is seen in acute LED occlusion, acute LED occlusion. Two types, type A is biphasic pattern, type, type B, type B is deep symmetrical inverted T waves. Okay, so that is Brain syndrome, acute LED occlusion. Then pre excitation syndrome, the WPW and lone ganon levine syndrome, I have already discussed multiple times. Again, this is the diagrammatic representation. You can see here there is an accessory pathway. This is bundle of Kent in case of WPW. It is James pathway in case of uh, lone ganon levine syndrome. So, uh, the triad I have already told, short PR, delta wave and white QRS. Okay, I will not uh, explain it again. The mechanisms, you can see the previous videos to understand it. Uh, so, if you see here, this image, you can see there is a, uh, you can see here there is P wave and immediately following P wave, there is the QRS complex and you can see there is a small noise that is the delta wave and there is slightly wide QRS complex, slightly wide QRS complex. So, this is WPW, but you should not stop at WPW because I have already told how to differentiate type A and type B WPW, type A and type B WPW. Type A and Type B. Now, how to differentiate Type A and, and Type B? So, Type A means Type A means the connection is on the left side. Connection is on the left side. So, this will behave like a right bundle branch, right bundle branch type pattern, right bundle branch block type pattern. So the left side is getting activated first. This is type A. Type B. The connection is on the right side. So the right side will be activated first. So this will behave like a left bundle branch like pattern. 
I have told right bundle branch like pattern in V1, you will get a dominant R, dominant R or dominant positive wave. In left bundle branch like pattern in V1, you will get a dominant S or a negative wave or a negative wave. So if in V1, if you are getting a positive wave, that is type A W beta group. So type A positive delta wave in R and in V1. Okay. And so in this image, in this image, here you can see the V1 is predominantly negative, that is left bundle branch like morphology, left bundle branch like morphology. So this is, this is, this is type B, so type B, WP, W. We hope this is clear. So always look at the V1. After identifying WPW, look at the V1 and try to find out which bundle branch like morphology. If it is a predominantly negative, that means it is a left bundle branch like morphology. If it is a left bundle branch like morphology, it is type B, WPW or the accessory pathway is on the right side. Okay. And if it is a dominant positive wave in V1, that is right bundle branch like morphology, that means it is a type A, WPW and the accessory pathway is on the left side. Don Garang Levine syndrome, here uh, accessory pathway is the James fibers. I have already told here the James fibers are connecting the bun bundle of his. So the QRS complex will be narrow. QRS complex will be narrow and there won't be any uh, there won't be any delta wave, but short PR will be there. You can see here the, there is a P wave, after that there is no PR segment and directly there is QRS complex, and you can see there is no delta wave and the QRS duration is normal. So that's all about uh, some of the syndromes. Next, we will be seeing the ECGs in uh, mice and uh, the AV blocks.